So the big question is how exactly are we supposed to organize and schedule our lives in not only the best but also the most efficient manner possible? And this is exactly what I'm going to try and answer in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. So the exam season, or maybe it's better to say the season of anxiety, stress and nervousness is approaching. And there is rarely anybody out there who looks forward to having exams or anybody who's excited for this exam season. The major reason for all this stress and anxiety or restlessness is the very question that we keep that we constantly keep asking ourselves and that is that how am I going to manage all this? How am I going to manage my social life or other activities that I'm interested in and also studying because naturally studying has to be prioritized over all other activities that we like doing. And this especially applies to med school where the course of the curriculum is so massive and huge that we are really dependent on having a good strategy or having a reasonably good plan in order to be able to not only breeze through the exam season but also make this entire process of having exams much more fun and much more not only enjoyable but also manageable. So the big question is how exactly are we supposed to organize and schedule our lives in not only the best but also the most efficient manner possible? And this is exactly what I'm going to try and answer in today's video. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. So firstly, I will talk to you guys about the prospective revision timetable and here I will explain what exactly this is and in what ways we can optimize this system of managing our time. Secondly, I will talk to you guys about the retrospective revision timetable and here I will explain what exactly this is and how we can make a retrospective revision timetable. And thirdly, I will be giving you guys a comparative analysis of the retrospective versus the prospective revision timetable and also explain why I personally prefer the uh, retrospective revision timetable over the prospective. And then I will end the video with a brief summary and some concluding remarks. And I know that this is going to be a long video guys, so please bear with me and try and stay till the end because very few people know about this retrospective revision timetable. And since ever since I have started using this, it has been a complete game changer for me. So kindly bear with me and stay till the end because it is probably going to be worth your time. So what exactly is the prospective revision timetable? The word prospective means looking forward in time or planning ahead of time. So as the name suggests, the prospective revision timetable is a timetable that is based on a timeline. And this is probably the most commonly used method of creating a timetable by students or even other people out there. So let's have a look at how we can create an efficient prospective revision timetable by using Google Sheets or creating a spreadsheet on Google. So we go to Google Spreadsheets and then we create a new spreadsheet. There we go. So let's create a prospective revision timetable from scratch and let's use days instead of dates just to make it simple. So in the topmost row we have got to write the um, days. So time. Then we got Monday. So on the column on the left side, you want to fill out the timeline for the day. So let's say you wake up at 8 a.m. Let's be realistic, right? Uh, and then 9 a.m. So the next thing that you want to do now is to start filling out all these cells with the activities that you want to be doing these particular days. So let's start off with Monday, right? So we wake up at 8. We want to or we wake up at 7.30, we have our breakfast, and then we wanna start studying at 8 a.m. So at eight, we write down maybe, that okay, I'm gonna study cell biology. So there we have the basic prospective revision timetable, which almost everybody uses. And now comes the question of how we can really optimize this timetable. So what most people like to do is that they, let's give this a nice color so, so that it looks a bit attractive, blue and all the days can be, let's say, um, that color. I don't know which color that is, but yeah, greenish. Uh, anyway, so what most people do is that they color grade in terms of enjoyment and the stuff that they are looking most forward to. So let's say you are looking forward to having a break. So they color all the cells with the word break with the color um, green. 
because now the moment you look at this timetable you know okay whenever i see that green timeline i know or the green cell or the green block i know this is something i'm really looking forward to and that's how most people color this and if there is something that they are not looking forward to then they simply color that in let's say red so if you're not looking forward to study anatomy you can color all that in red okay there we go red and gym can also be blue because you must look forward to it in the gym <laughs> so yeah kind of th that's kind of how it looks for most people out there however the problem with this kind of color coding is that it can be a bit demotivating when you see all those red cells and you see okay i man i have so much work to do and i have so much that i'm not looking forward to so even though you have this benefit of finding out what you're looking forward to you still have all these red colors which are the things that you are not looking forward to and hence it can be a bit demotivating at times and here is the twist so instead of color coding all these blocks in terms of enjoyment or in terms of how much you are looking forward to it you can simply color code in terms of difficulties because that's gonna create this idea in your head in your head whenever you see that color that okay that that red block is what i'm the least comfortable with and hence i need to focus more on that rather than the green blocks which is the material or the subject that i'm pretty comfortable with so uh, that would look something like this let's first color all this white uh, no that wasn't white right uh, yeah it was white and let's say you are the least comfortable with anatomy so you can simply color anatomy in in red and in this way you can also promote anatomy because that is something that you are the least comfortable with and it's your weak point so instead of having this over here we can promote this to um the first thing in the morning so anatomy here and where we can have uh cell biology bio uh yeah so basically you are now um prioritizing the weak points first and also color coding color coding in terms of how much or how well you know the subject so that's the whole idea of this prospective revision timetable with color coding according to uh, the level of difficulty now i personally do not prefer the prospective revision timetable and there are several reasons for that which i will explain later on but first let's have a look at the timetable which i personally do prefer and it's called the retrospective revision timetable so what exactly is the retrospective revision timetable? The prospective revision timetable was when we were planning ahead of time, right? But the retrospective is the exact opposite. Retrospective means looking back in time or looking backwards. So here the timeline is not the main focus. Rather you want rather you are using a timetable that is based on the list of topics and subjects that you want to be covering. So let me show you guys what a retrospective revision timetable looks like and how we can create our own retrospective timetable and this is basically a seven step process where firstly you want to create a separate sheet for different subjects so you go to google sheets and here at the bottom you can create different sheets so sheet one let's call it um internal medicine because that's one subject we have in medicine or medicine and then you can create a separate spread a separate sheet for let's say pharmacology pharma and so on and so forth right so let's go back to the to internal medicine which is the subject that we want to focus most on today so the second thing that you want to do is that you want to divide this entire spreadsheet into different parts or into different portions based on the topic that you want to be studying for so let's say we are planning for internal medicine which we have by the way already created a separate uh, sheet for right over here so internal medicine we can divide into different portions like cardiology pulmonology endocrinology etc but let's let's just focus on cardiology and pulmonology for the moment so let's create two separate portions for cardiology and pulmonology so now we have created two separate portions and now what we can start doing is that we can start writing down all the topics or all the lectures within or the subtopics within these topics from internal medicine so cardiology we can start off with let's say heart failure heart failure now once you have listed or created a list for all the topics that you want to be studying for you can start revising or start your exam revision by asking yourself the question that which of these topics am i the least comfortable with so let's say i am the least comfortable with 
with um, coronary disease, all right? So that's what I'm gonna first start revisiting. So let's say I revise coronary disease because that's what, I, what I'm least comfortable with. And I get, get done with that on the 1st of December. So I revise coronary disease on the 1st of December. Now, based on the difficulty level that I faced, I'm going to color code this box or color code this cell. So let's say it went below par and that's why I want to color this in red. So now let's just repeat the same process for all these other topics as well. Now, once I have revisited all these topics, this is how my spreadsheet now looks like. So I revisited heart failure on the 2nd of December and it wasn't that bad, but it went reasonably okay. So let's color that in yellow, right? However, endocarditis and cancer, lung cancer, I revised on the 5th and 9th of December respectively and they went pretty smoothly or pretty well so I can simply color those in green and that's how I know that okay well done Arham endocarditis and cancer lung cancer are you pretty comfortable with so I know that these are colored in green and I'm reasonably comfortable with these two topics however the other four topics are colored in red which means when I revise these topics I was not comfortable at all and they went below par or below my expectations. So once round one is complete and I want to continue revising all these topics, I'm going to focus a lot more on these four which I was not comfortable with. So let's say in round two, I start revisiting asthma and that is on let's say the 14th or 15th of December. And let's say this time I'm able to perform a bit better than, la than the last time. So I'm going to color this in yellow. So now I can clearly see my progression. I can see that the first time I revised asthma, it was red, whereas the second time I revised asthma, it turned into yellow, which means I'm slowly getting better at this. And now you can simply repeat this entire process for all the other subjects as well for round two. So now after round two, this is how my timetable looks like. So heart failure, which was a yellow the first time I revised this has now turned into green which means I'm now comfortable with it whereas uh, let's say endocarditis which I was firstly very comfortable with in the first round I feel that this has that I have forgotten a lot of the material the second time I revised this and now I have to mark this in yellow so I can clearly see that I'm progressing in let's say heart failure and all the other and on in all the other subjects whereas now I need to focus a bit more on endo endocarditis because firstly it was green but for some reason I managed to forget the material and now I'm back to yellow. So I'm going to focus more on these yellow subjects for the next round, for round three. And this is simply how you continue with the same process until hopefully most boxes or most cells will go green towards the exam. And in that way you can simply track your progression and also see what exactly you need to improve more on. Now let's move on to the comparative analysis of the retrospective versus the prospective revision timetable and also explain why I personally like to use the retrospective revision timetable. So there are two problems associated with the prospective revision timetable. So firstly, the prospective revision timetable consumes a lot of your energy where you need to sit down and really plan, okay, that well on this day and at this time, I want to be studying for this and this subject. So it requires some really extensive planning, which might result in an increased friction between you and creating the plan or you and actually carrying out the act of creating a plan or creating the prospective revision timetables. And oftentimes this increased friction between us and the act of doing that act or planning or creating a timetable might lead to the fact that we will not bother creating a plan. The second problem with the prospective revision timetable is the stress factor, where you have a list of all the things or all the tasks that you need to be doing at a specific time, that it might create this sort of a sort of pressure situation where you know that you have to be doing this and this task at this and this given time. And if for some reason you are not able to complete those tasks, then you get this feeling of lagging behind and that's the last thing you want because that might lead to you getting anxious or even more nervous or it might be demotivating as well. So the stress factor is the second problem which I believe is a huge problem um, associated with the prospective revision timetable. So now let's talk about why I personally prefer the retrospective revision timetable over the prospective timetable. So the first benefit of the retrospective timetable is that it's completely based upon active recall and you start revising 
the material or the subject or the topic that you are the least comfortable with. And this eventually results into you getting really good at your weak points. So that's the first benefit. The second reason why I prefer the retrospective timetable is that there is minimal stress involved because you don't have a list of all the tasks that you need to be doing at given times, right? Okay, you, and you don't have the feeling of, okay, I need to get this and this done within this very given time frame. So it creates this low pressure environment, which I think is absolutely optimal when you are in the exam situation, which is already very stressful. The third benefit of the retrospective timetable is that it's very easy to track your progression, which I think is absolutely amazing because it, 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 it ends up with you getting really good at your weak points towards the exam and also hopefully will result in you acing your exams or improving your exam performance drastically. However, at the same time, there are also some drawbacks associated with the retrospective revision timetable. Uh, or in other words, it requires a lot of honesty with yourself and also discipline where you cannot slack off, but also but you constantly have to track your progression and see what you need to focus more on based on the subjects or the topics that you know the least or the topics that you are the least comfortable with. So yeah, it really requires some honesty and discipline, which might be a drawback. So to summarize, there are two ways of managing your time or creating a schedule for your exam period. The first one is the prospective revision timetable, which is based on, on the timeline and you plan ahead of time. That okay, on a given day, on a, at a given time, I need to be performing this and this task. That's the prospective revision timetable. Whereas the retrospective revision timetable is based on the on the list of topics and subjects that you want to focus on and are your weak points and i personally like using the retrospective revision timetable instead of the prospective one because this creates a low stress environment or a low pressure environment and secondly it is based on active recall and thirdly it ends up with us improving our weak points the most and that's i think the best part about the retrospective revision timetable. So that's a wrap for today, guys. And I know that this has been a pretty long video and kudos to you if you were actually able to survive till the end. So if you have any questions or comments, then kindly let me know in the comment section below or just contact me on my socials. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.